Hey guys, it's me again, Julie Sundar. Today I'll be starting my new series, which is based on the setting up of a low power one in Suriname. The low power one project was created by an initiative called Things Core from an organization called IT Core. And the idea behind setting up this low power one is to create a prototype in Suriname for possibly the Caribbean. A why low power one? IT Core has been running these events and activities such as Hackathon and Hackomation based on IoT solution for quite some time now. So they decided to set up a dedicated things network for the connecting of these IoT devices. And the first implementation which will be running is the LoRaWAN. So keep watching. Next I'm going to be going over the LoRaWAN network architecture. LoRaWAN, which stands for Long Range Wide Area Network, is a protocol developed by the LoRa Alliance. LoRaWAN is a media access control protocol for wide area networks. It is designed to allow low power devices to communicate with internet connected applications over long range wireless connections. In the LoRa architecture, there are objects which are called device, node or mode with the embedded low power communication device. You have network which is used to route messages from nodes to the right application and back. And you have gateway which are antennas that receive broadcast from nodes and send data back to the nodes. Next, you have application, which is a piece of software running on a server, uplink message, which is a message from a device to an application, and downlink message, which is a message from an application to a device. The peculiarity of this new protocol is the efficiency. Because LoRaWAN has a minimal power consumption, long range of communication, which is up to 15 kilometers in rural areas, and secure data transmission with AES-128 encryption. The range of communication is around 2 kilometers in dense urban areas and up to 15 kilometers in rural areas and is influenced by the position of the end devices and of the gateway. If the gateway is mounted in a high place, the cover will be major than if it's mounted in a low place. So next let's go over the LoRaWAN security. LoRaWAN uses two types of symmetric session key for the security of the communication that are unique for each LoRa device. The network session key is used to guarantee the message integrity from the device to the LoRa network server. And the app key is used for the end-to-end AES-128 encryption for the device to the application server. LoRaWAN devices has two ways to join the network. The first is OTAA, over-the-air activation. The device and the network exchange a 128-bit app key. When the device sends a join request, the app key is used to create a message integrity code, MIC. The server then checks the mic with the app key. If the check is valid, the server creates two new 128-bit keys, the app session key and the network session key. These keys are sent back to the device using the app key as an encryption key. When the keys are received, the device decrypts and installs the two session keys. The second method for the network join is ABP, activation by personalization. In this case, the device session keys are inserted by the user. Thus, it is possible to have security issues. So we just went over the LoRaWAN architecture. Let's go ahead and start with the first installation. We're going to start off by installing and programming the LoRaWAN gateway and connecting to TTN server. Hey guys, so today we'll be building the LoRaWAN gateway using the LoRaWAN gateway for Raspberry Pi 3 kit, which is here. So let's go ahead and see what's inside. First off, we have a rising HF board, which will be serving as our concentrator board for our LoRaWAN transmitters. And next, we have our bridge board, which will be used to connect our Raspberry Pi 3 to our rising HF board. Additionally, we have the antenna for the LoRaWAN system. We have adapters, micro SD card, Ethernet cable, USB to UR connector, and some micro USB cables. What we'll also be using for this system is the Raspberry Pi 3. As you can see here, we already add some cooling to the Raspberry Pi 3, and we also add this plate for when we'll be assembling it into the case. So let's go ahead and get it assembled. So as you can see here, we have a Raspberry Pi 3, our bridge board, 
a rising HF board, and two micro USB cables. So first off, what you want to do is take your Raspberry Pi 3 and connect your bridge board to your Raspberry Pi 3. Once that's seated, you want to go ahead and take your rising HF board and connect it to your bridge board. You can see here, it's all connected. Okay, let's go ahead and power this up. What you have to understand is that the entire system is powered from the micro USB input of the bridge board. And the USB host board on the bridge board is used to output power to the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and connect that. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this power. And see here, this is how it should look. So next, let's go ahead and check out the case. This is the case. We bought this on the internet. In here, we'll be assembling our LoRaWAN gateway. But before we can go ahead, we have to make holes on it for the antennas and for the ethernet cable. So we went ahead and made some holes in the case, one for the antenna and one for the ethernet cable. We also bought some power over ethernet adapters to power our LoRaWAN system over ethernet, but we won't be using that as yet. On the case, we went and assembled a Raspberry Pi power bank to keep our LoRaWAN system running if the power is out or if you would like to use solar panel. But before we go ahead and assemble the LoRa system in the case, let's go ahead and program it. So let's begin. What you want to do, you want to make sure you use a clean Raspbian Jesse image for this installation. You want to make sure that you can connect to your Raspberry Pi using PuTTY and that you have access to the internet. If you need help with this, you can follow my previous tutorial on the basic installation of the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and connect to PuTTY. So the first thing you want to do is enable SPI with this command raspy config. Once that's finished, you want to go ahead and install the required packages. When you're starting off, you want to go ahead and do app get update and app get upgrade to update to the latest versions. But I did that already. And once you're done with that, you wanna go ahead and install git and wiring pi. You wanna go ahead and use this command app get install git wiring pi. Once that's completed, you wanna go ahead and resolve your DNS. You want to navigate to ETC network interfaces. Scroll down to the bottom. And copy paste this line of code. You want to go ahead and save and exit. Next, what you want to do is get clone the gateway source for the rising HF chipset. Then you want to go ahead and copy paste this command. Once that's completed, 
You want to navigate into the gateway directory. And you want to install the binaries by doing sudo dot slash install dot sh spi. Once that's finished installing, the system is going to go ahead and reboot. Once the system is rebooted, you want to go ahead and log into your Raspberry Pi using WinSCP. Once you're in WinSCP, you want to go ahead and navigate to where your main folder of your gateway is. And that's an OPT TTN gateway. Then you want to go ahead and navigate to OPT ttn gateway slash bin folder and edit the global.config.json file. Since we're using the US frequency, you want to navigate into this GitHub repository and copy paste the US global config.json parameters into your global config.json file. Once you're done copying that, you want to go ahead and copy your gateway config at the bottom of the file with your parameters like your device MAC address, your description, latitude, longitude, email address, and you can also add additional servers to it. Next, what you want to do, you want to go ahead and edit the local config.json file. And you want to go ahead and put an empty object in there and save it. Next, let's go ahead and add a symbolic link to the pulley packet forwarder folder into the bin folder. If you'd like to check where the poly packet forwarder is, it's an OPT TTN gateway, packet forwarder, poly packet forwarder. Once that's completed, let's go ahead and use this command to set the rising HF reset pin to 7, as opposed to the SimTech pin, which was 25. And lastly, let's go ahead and register a gateway on TTN. Next, you want to navigate to the thingsnetwork.org. You want to click on console, gateway. Then you want to go ahead and register a gateway. For your gateway ID, you want to go ahead and type in your device's MAC address. I want to go ahead and 
click off, I'm using the legacy packet forwarder. For description, you can type whatever you prefer as your description. And for my frequency plan, I'm using United States, which is 915 megahertz. And for routers, I'm using TTN Router US West. After you're finished with that, you want to go ahead and register your gateway. And once you're finished with that, you can check your status and it should say connected. And you should check your last scene, which is supposed to be a couple seconds ago. So congratulations, you just went ahead and installed your LoRaWAN gateway. So now that we're finished installing and programming the LoRaWAN gateway, let's go ahead and assemble it into the box. Hey guys, so that was the end for this tutorial. We just went over installing and programming our gateway and connecting to TTN. In our next tutorial, we'll be adding a node to the architecture. We'll be installing and programming our node, connect to our gateway, and then connect to TTN. So stay tuned for our next tutorial.